Yep, that's correct. I did it. I finally did it. I can't believe it, but it finally actually happened. At first, you might be wondering, Alex, what are you even talking about? Now, the goal of mine was to be able to finally get off the road. That Honestly, that's probably a universal goal of every truck driver, of every over-the-road transporter. Everybody wants to eventually, one of two ways, get off the road. They want to either save up enough money, and so then they can either live off the money that they saved, or be able to at least save up enough to transition to a different job, or the other alternative is to grow your business big enough where the profits in your business can sustain your current home personal expenses. And ever since I started hot shotting almost six years ago and I got my own MC almost three years ago now, I've wanted to build up the company so that I could finally actually for good get off the road. So consider this video as the start of a new chapter. We're turning over a new leaf both in the content and in the business because I'm not gonna be doing any road vlogs anymore. I actually want to build my business to a big I mean, multi-million dollar grossing company, and I am excited. So let me tell you what a week I've been having. This is my first week at home, and it all started with delivering my last load. It went to Houston from the Northwest. And I thought for sure I would just unload in Houston at the port and just deadhead, uh, deadhead home essentially back to the shop. But sure enough, that's not the plan. I was on the phone with the broker trying to cover another driver. And he's like, hey, I actually have a container at the port in Houston. Do you want to go pick up the container? Do you have any trucks in that area? And I laugh. I'm like, hey, I'm actually at the port in Houston getting unloaded. I could take this container. I knew I wouldn't be able to take it to Utah. That's where the container was going. So I knew the plan was to go pick it up, bring it to Weatherford, and then give it to the driver to deliver. But that's not all. I actually had a driver pick up a load in Waxahachie, I believe, going to Florida for a driver that was unloading really late in the afternoon. In the afternoon, so we couldn't get him a load because everything would have been closed on Friday. And so I had a driver pick up the load, and then they were going to do the swap trailers. And then one driver would continue his home time because he just got off the road, and this other driver would take the load and deliver it in Florida. So we have two loads: one going to Utah and one going to Florida. But the problem is both trailers need service. So I make it home on Friday and Saturday. Saturday afternoon, we get to work. All right, so we are back at the yard in Weatherford and we have a couple of things that we need to do. The first thing is when the forklift driver was loading the container, he loaded the back pretty well, but the front is a little bit not center. So the first thing we need to do is adjust the container, pull it over a little bit. The next thing we need to do is actually service the trailer that's under the container. One of the axles is bent on it, so we have to replace the axle. And the last thing I want to do is install this like paperwork holder for the trailers. This is where I'm going to put my trailer registration and annual inspection because when my drivers swap trailers, sometimes they forget to, you know, swap the paperwork as well. The other thing I want to mention is some guy, Mike, I helped him sell his truck and he sent me this gigantic sign, which it's so big. You're going to have to let me know what you think about this idea for the trailer paperwork. I think it's pretty cool. I think it makes sense. I think it's going to make it easier for drivers to swap trailers. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Tomorrow, though, the drivers are going to be showing up to pick up these two trailers, the container and that tarp load over there. So I'm done with the axle, but what I found while doing it is one of my tires is bad. First of all, like some of the threads are to the wear bars. And not only that, actually, there's like a big gash in the tire. So that's not good. So let's make some calls and see if we can find a 245 70 19.5. Thank you for calling TA Weatherford. 
Just Ken, how may I help you? Hey Ken, do you have a 245 19.5 trailer tire? Uh, give me one second, I'll look for you, boss. Sure. Hey, I was wondering if you have a 245, 70, 19.5. Uh, says we have one Bridgestone. And how much is that? Tire. It is 467. Is that mounted? No, that's just the tire. Okay. All right. Um, can you can you hold that one for me? I'll be I'll come by and pick it up. Okay, my name is Alex. All right, well, you heard the lady, so let's go to Dallas and pick up a tire. Now, while we're headed to the DA, you might be wondering, Alex, hold the phone. Don't you have a maintenance guy that's supposed to be do this, doing this? And you are absolutely correct. I do have a maintenance guy, it's Dylan, but the problem is Dylan is already at 40 hours for the week, so unfortunately, he can't do it. The other question you might have is, Alex, isn't there a better time to do this? And you'd be absolutely right, there is a better time. However, that container has to be in Utah as soon as possible. So tomorrow morning when the driver's restart is over, he's gonna grab that trailer and go. And I don't feel comfortable sending a trailer out on the road without a spare tire or with the condition that tire was in. So unfortunately, I have no choice but to do all this stuff right now to prep the trailer for him tomorrow. Uh, I called earlier about a tire, uh, 245, 70, 19.5. Cash only? I can't use my debit card? Seriously? All right, there goes a quick $480. Wow, uh, that's a bummer. Uh, apparently that's a 245-70-17.5, not a 19.5. Oh, that's not good at all. Oh, no. So right now it's, well, right now it's in the morning, but oh, in that video, it's already like two in the morning and I'm so exhausted and tired. And I decided, I'm like, man, I probably won't get the trailer done that's under the container in time for the driver. And then I'll have to hold up the other driver. So I'm like, I need to finish something. So I aborted the plans of getting that tire. I, I ended up sending my the driver to go pick up the, uh, to do the return and pick up the correct size. And he actually ended up mounting it. And, but I switched to the other trailer and come to find out the other trailer was even more broken and beat up and needed more service than this trailer. But because I was so exhausted, I literally just ended up sleeping in the driver's seat of one of the trucks. I literally just passed out just for like a one hour nap and then I got to work servicing the trailers. Well, good morning. <laughs> um, a long night turned into a long early morning turned into huge massive problems and then the phone died uh, so it's been it's been great um, but here let me show you guys what I'm working with okay so this trailer I'm trying to prep it for the driver trying to get the brakes to work well but the issue is there's usually these two holes right here that you can put your brake spoon in there and adjust your brakes however those holes are useless you can't even see anything you can't even adjust anything so I'm like let me just cut this whole bottom piece off so I take the grinder cut this whole thing off and then it brings me to this little spinny thingy my bob can you uh there you go so it brings me to this thing right now this thing normally spins pretty freely actually so it's supposed to when you turn it up increase your braking power or resistance or something like that and <laughs> goodness gracious this thing is literally it's like it's frozen solid but in reality, it, well, it's like stuck, you know? And so I was banging on this with a hammer and a screwdriver all night 
literally and it's not just this one it's actually that one and that one and that one look they're all cut off you see that how i cut all of them off right there and so this has been an absolute disaster nightmare situation because i'm banging on this thing so hard and it's literally not moving so here's what i had to do you grab a flathead with grease on it obviously what you do is you first of all you bend this clip out right here like that or like that there you go so you bend this clip out and then you what you do is you push up against right here um on this thing because it's essentially just spring loaded and then you put it against this and then you just kind of wedge it out of there ah, if yeah hold on ah, ah, oh there it goes there it goes there you go like that so there you go now it's wedged out look boom so here you go so you got your two clips and then your um, and then this is the mechanism and so even though the threads are on the inside and you're trying to unscrew it I have no idea why it's seized though so it must just be rust or, uh, or brake dust or something like that but anyways this is the part and so what you want to do is you get your uh, this vice grips right here and you just go really tight right there and then the other thing, the important part is you gotta make a custom tool, okay? And what the custom tool is, you just take a, an extension like this and you just cut it down. And you wanna cut it down so it's like basically a really thick flathead screwdriver. And then you take off your this one and you put this one on instead, okay? And then you can, you see how this side has a plus and this is just a circle. So this is the side that spins and because this is the plus when it sits on the flat right here it this is the side that doesn't spin so when you when the thing adjusts it turns this dial and it free spins on this side but it this is what holds it right and so you basically force it to unscrew by oh dang it try that again you force it to unscrew by using the impact ah, ah. the other ones were easier than this And so what you do is you unscrew it like this, go get some brake clean and spray it down and all this rust, all this brake dust comes out and then you just go back in and out a couple of times and then that will essentially like lube it up so that it can free spin and then you tighten it back to roughly where it was, throw it back in there, put your wheel and hub back on and then adjust it like normal. And this is how I've been able to get all the brakes to work. I'm a little disappointed that this tiny little thing can essentially make you lose brakes and also this is a newer trailer i don't understand why it's so rusty in there you know it's, it's ridiculous hey, man. hey what's up kevin so i went to enterprise this morning and they told me um when they pulled up the vin like it showed that they had to change the fuel filters and it wouldn't let them take that off and they didn't have the fuel filters in stock and i said well i don't have to do that like, I only have to do that every other time, and this is the first one. How many miles on your but truck? 9,000. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, you, um, I mean, unless the Ford protocol is different, or Ford maintenance interval is different, um, yeah, it's been the same way for the longest time. First, uh, yeah, within the first 10,000 miles, just an oil change. Well, within the first 20, um, oil change and fuel filter. Or two oil changes and one fuel filter. So that's weird. So yeah, they did weird. they do the oil change and then you left? No, they could. They wouldn't do it. They, they said it kept. They wouldn't give them authorization to do it. And normally they can contact Enterprise and somebody can like approve it then. But because it's Sunday, they can't do that. That's Kevin. He's a new owner operator starting uh, literally next week. Um, and he just picked up a lease return from Enterprise, and so he's having some issues getting the oil change done on it. All right, so I just got done with the first driver's trailer, and now I started working on the container trailer. I just gotta wrap it up. But um, but yeah, the driver actually just pulled in. So let's just go say hi, uh, because actually I think I hired him without actually meeting him in person. <laughs> I was on the road, you know, uh, I think a week ago or something like that. So it was super funny. But anyways, let's see. All right. Well, we got some good news and some bad news. The good news is we just got done. Uh, Manny was a huge help in this one because he helped me finish the service on it. Uh, we did the oil to grease conversion. And actually, there was some missing parts on that trailer, too. But long story short is it's now 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going home. I dozed off in the driver's seat of the truck and that was not super comfortable for about an hour so i'm running on about an hour of sleep 
I literally showed up at the shop at like one o'clock in the afternoon and it's now two o'clock on Sunday. So, but Monday, there's a couple of new owner operators starting. Monday, some of the drivers are getting unloaded. So I'm gonna ask my dispatchers if they need help with any of the trucks and we will go from there. Um, Manny's getting some fuel. So uh, other than that, let's pick it up tomorrow. All right, well, good morning. It is now Monday, so that means it's back to work. Um, I ended up sleeping for like 11 hours after that, after I got all the trucks on the road, so that's exciting. But I did not not do anything already this Monday morning. I picked up a bunch of parts over here. Um, we got an, a rim that they, actually the shop had a rim laying around, so they're like, Alex, you want a rim? I'm like, yes, because I know I have a tire in there, so. Uh, we'll just throw that. Picked up four tires. That's good because I'm getting rid of the 19.5s. And then picked up some brakes so that we're not having those issues on the weekends like yesterday. Because I don't like being up for 35 hours straight. Oh, no. It was like 25, 28, something like that. But anyway, so we're going to get uh, get this unloaded and then go sign the paperwork on the land. Oh. Easy. We, we got a new camera guy, it's Dylan. He's actually the maintenance guy. But anyways, look what I bought for you, Dylan. Just for you. See, I'm, a, I'm such a nice boss. I'm so sorry, man. How are you? Doing good. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I'm long, but, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Hi, I'm Rakesha. Alex. Nice to, nice meet, to meet you. you. I haven't yeah. met you yet. Nice to meet you. Cool. And all right, well, it's finally official. We finally got the land. It's mine. I own it. Well, the bank owns it, but whatever. You get the gist. Um, well, a couple things we were waiting on is, first and foremost, look, this is the cut, the second driveway that they put in. Seller was a super cool dude. Uh, literally threw it in, no charge, so I'm excited. So now the trucks will be able to pull in over there on, the, on Old Dennis Road, and then they'll be able to exit out the back. Um, the only thing is, you know, we might have to make it a little wider <laughs> because... It's like for two cars, which I don't know, we'll see. Uh, whatever, that's down the road, not not super critical. But regardless, but look at how steep it is back here. Um, so the next thing with the land is gonna be to clear the land and level it out. Uh, so if you know how to clear land and level it out, you just let me know. <laughs> but anyways, we're going back to the office. The new owner operators that we have, they are ready to go. So the owner operators need loads. So I gotta go dispatch some loads. Hey, Brandon, what, why only 6,600? Did you get a scale ticket? Yeah, it's because it's, I'm at like 19,200 final weight now. You're at 19,2? Yeah. Jesus. Seriously? Yeah. Man, that's a heavy trailer. Hey, uh, I see a Gardena, California to Beaverton, Oregon. I see it's posted for 3,100 pounds. I was wondering if that would work for a 40 foot hot shot. Yes, sir, it's gonna be at least 48 feet because the product's 45 feet. Uh huh, understood. Thank you. Hey, calling about in Oakland, California to Omaha, Nebraska? It's covered. Uh huh, all right, thank you. Your call has been forwarded to the board. Hey, calling about a uh, load San Diego, California to Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania? And I have a hot shot that's actually a 40 foot hot shot. He's not far from there. Um, he's about uh, 10 miles away. So he could pick it up today. Um, but do you have any flexibility on that rate? I'd, I'd want to be at like 2450. I don't know how much I can do. Uh, I can do like 21 on the All right, 21. Let's lock it down. What do you need from me? All right, I just heard lock down a partial um, 18 feet, about 2100 pounds, 2100 bucks. So that's pretty good. Now we just gotta find a partial to tack on with that. Um, Cali rate's honestly not great. So we're just trying to get them out of Cali, no doubt. But 18 feet, 2,100 pounds. Now this is an owner operator that has a 40 foot dually trailer. So he can only scale 6,600 pounds. So I really gotta pay attention to the weight, make sure they're accurate. Otherwise it's gonna be tough for us to find loads, but it's gonna be really tough to find loads. This is why, by the way, you don't get a dually trailer. You get single wheel trailers uh, because it's just too too darn heavy. Um, they really are, like he says his trailer is 9,100 pounds or something like that, that's ridiculous. So anyways, we're gonna keep looking for a partial and we'll see what we can book. Hey, down in California to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, that partial. Yeah, just a little uh, chiller pump, 500 pounds, 41 by 24 by 29, what can you pick up? Uh, he's uh, about 100 or so miles away. Uh, are they open? If he makes it today, possibly today. Okay. 
And then what was the rate on that? Oh, I got it off at uh, twelve ninety nine. Um, I mean, do you want to call it an even thirteen hundred? Yeah, we would round up that. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, thirteen hundred. What do you need from me? We can. Um, it's a forty foot hot try. He, uh, if he makes it this afternoon, he'll be there. If not, it would be first thing in the morning, and then deliver by the end of the week. Now, if you were to tell me that. Once I get off the road, I'm actually going to work more hours than I did while driving. I wouldn't believe you, but that has certainly been the case for this first week of being off the road. And I just got done servicing this trailer right here. Uh, it's 840. And what what happened was those dials that I, I talked about earlier, they are actually pretty good here. So I just turned them up. Everything's good. Um, everything seems to be working. It's holding. The brakes are good. So um, I, I like one of my biggest things is never to send a driver without brakes. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. And he already has the load so he's gonna go pick up the load and the driver Henry he's already here um, so that's that's good and then this truck actually is a 2021 has about 15,000 miles on it and what happened with the truck that he was driving previously that's the truck that had diesel in the def tank which we'll be picking up that truck probably in the next week or so